For this problem, we want to find out how much Julia needs to invest each year for six years, such that, and she's going to start in one year, so here we are today, such that in six years, she has just as much as Lindsay does, and Lindsay invested initially four years ago. And the thing is with Lindsay is she invested at simple interest. So four years ago, and you can see in our timeline, if we set up today is time zero, four years ago is time minus four, or we can retime it and call four years ago time zero, such that six years from today is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years after the money was originally invested. So Lindsay put in 6500 and it's going to grow or accrue interest 10% per year of simple interest. And what that means is that every year, Lindsay's account is going to increase in size by 10% of 6500 So every year, she's going to get $650. So how much is she going to have out here? Out here, she's going to have the original 6500 plus each year, She's going to get 6,500 times 10% and she's going to have it invested for 10 years. And that is simply equal to 6,500 plus 6,500 and that's equal to 1, so it's 6,500 plus 6,500, 13,000 dollars. So we know that Lindsay is going to have, or expects to have, $13,000 out here. So now Julia, it says, how much money will she have in six years if she makes investments uh, for six years, equal investments, and the first one in one year. So Julia is going to make an investment here, 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 and here. And since here we are today, we can say, aha, the amount of money that she'll have here is the future value of an annuity. Why? Because here we are, first payment in one year, second in two, third in three, fourth in four, fifth in fifth, five years, six in six years, and then as soon as that payment is made, we want to say how much is in her account. And we want that to be equal to $13,000. And so here, because we're dealing with an annuity, because we're here and the first payment is one period later, we want the calculator to be in end mode. We'll set n equal to 6 because there's 6 payments. It tells us we want to get what the value is going to be in 6 years. And we're going to set we're going to, payments we're going to be looking for. We're going to set PV equal to zero because she doesn't have any money and she's not making a special contribution at time zero. FE is equal to $13,000. So basically we're going to be solving, oh, and the interest rate, the interest rate is given at 10%. It says that she can earn 10% of compound interest. So Lindsay's money grew at simple interest, and that's how we got to 13000 But Julia is earning compound interest, which is what we normally assume, which is why we can treat it as a future value in annuity. So I% percent is equal to 10. And we simply want to solve for the pain. So basically we're saying, what is the payment such that the future value of this payment gets a chance to grow for five periods of 10% compound, one, one plus 10%, 1.1 to the fifth, plus 1.1 to the fourth times the second payment, third, fourth, and then as soon as we put this last payment in, 
and we say how much is there, it's 13,000. If you go ahead and solve for this in your calculator, you wind up that payment is equal to negative 1,000, $684.90, which means that if Julia puts in $1684.90 in one year, $1684 in two years, three, four, five, six, as soon as she puts in that last payment, she'll have $13,000 in her account.